Pressing news courtesy of The Telegraph concerning my team, Manchester United, and our coach or manager, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, which says the following. My United look to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with new contract despite Europa League final loss. Ed Woodward, who I thought had left his post at United, who'd kind of seeped past his new and, you know, tucked his tail between his legs and ran off. But somehow he's still calling the shots and deciding things like new contract, which just says everything he needs to know about United. But it says Edward to reward the manager despite defeat and will spearhead United's summer transfer plans ahead of his exit in December. So he's exiting in December, making one last final. He's leaving, he's leaving us with one um, last final cupcake, which is basically giving Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a three-year contract, which is just typical of United, isn't it? Absolutely typical, man. So the following, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be um, backed with a new contract in, and the summer signings in the transfer market, spearheaded by an ongoing executive outgoing so executive vice chairman ed woodward despite manchester united finishing the season without a trophy united is disappointed in the europa league final this week but the campaign is seen by the club's board as progress which is frightening after finishing second in the premier league and reaching their first final under Solskjaer, the norwegian 48 which is you know still didn't win two previous semi-finals got, didn't win either so it doesn't really count for anything in my opinion but we continue the norwegian 48 has won um, season left on his current deal and will open talks over a free extension. He will also be supported with up to four signings to bolster this squad in an attempt to close the gap with champions Manchester City. Now, on the face of it, of course, this is terrible news. I think we've just learned now in the morning, as I'm reporting this, that Andrea Pirlo, the manager of Juventus and obviously ex-Juventus legend, has now been sacked from his post at Juventus as head coach. He finished the season in fourth place, I'm assuming, on the last Champions League place in the Serie A. Also finished the season with a trophy, but after a year, Juventus deemed that not to be acceptable enough in order for them to get back to where they need to get to, so they've made the change. The early suggestions is that um, Allegri is going to come back and manage at Juventus again so that might be one of them or another option but you know big teams doing big things so it's really funny the contrast of seeing United, you see United a club that does everything their own way and also gets it wrong right so we kind of want to do things our own way and kind of move to the beat of our own drum and uphold these standards and traditions and whatever it may be which for the most part were only created during Sir Alex Ferguson's you know, most successful period at the club. It's not as if these things have been embedded within the DNA of Manchester United, right? It's just insane. But anyway, they use terms like DNA, cultural reset and all that sort of nonsense. And you look at what we're doing and we're doing the complete opposite of everybody else. We've just only recently hired a director of football who has been at the club since, you know, um, David Moyes was there. So I'm not really sure what change we're expecting there. He's also got an assistant who is Darren Fletcher, who has no experience of working in a job. So we've hired all these amateurs and people who have not really pulled up any trees whilst they're at the club to do a very important part of what modern day football clubs are about. Um, and yeah, on the face of it, it just is really bad. I guess if you look at it and kind of step, take a step back, this is quite in line with what United do. Whenever anyone, whether it's a coach or a player, has only a year left on their contract, we tend to kind of automatically renew just so we can cover our backs, I guess, which I don't really know what is going on here because it's not as if you know, another big club is going to come and try and prize Oli away from us. He's a pretty mediocre football coach, I think most people can agree on. He might be world-class and he's man-managing what he's done with Luke Shaw, what he's done with Paul Pope in terms of getting him settled, what he did for the early parts with Martial, what he did for the early parts with um, his experience with Rashford, um, McTominay's kind of grown into another play underneath him, obviously Bruno Fernandes signing. He's done some obviously great things, but mostly in terms of the man-management side of things. I think a lot of the players, if you spoke to them one by one in private off the record I think they'd argue the same but in terms of coaching in terms of actually getting those players to play above their level within a system that brings out maybe the best and some of the worst of players I don't think he's necessarily going to do that or ever will be able to do that we've ever seen we've even seen in most recent interviews that he says something along the lines of like oh I'm not the coach I leave that to other people in the coaching stuff I'm more of a man manager he's even said that himself right so if that's the case we and we are a club that doesn't necessarily spend a lot of money on a lot of players. We might spend a lot of money on two of two of players, right? Marquee one, maybe one, 
but we're not exactly going to go out and sign the four to six players that we need, maybe four first team players and maybe the other two can be players that can fill in the squad. But we definitely need four first team players to come in and challenge and maybe stake a claim for their starting role in the, in the starting lineup in order for us to have any semblance of an opportunity to challenge, you know, amazing clubs like Man City who are run very well compared to us from top to bottom who have a supreme coach, who have unlimited funds with their owners, obviously with, you know, some, you know, maybe not so so desirable methods of get, attaining their wealth but still they have a far better avenue and option to do so than we do so it's looking a bit worrying I got business it's looking very very worrying of how we've kind of rewarded what looks like fate what, what what looks like progress we've actually rewarded failure in my opinion but hey we continue it says Jaden Sancho is also a primary target as a wide forward which is key position to strengthen the United manager would also like a striker a, a young central midfielder and a defender if anybody legitimately thinks that we're going to improve, the st our football is going to improve in any meaningful way with the signing of Jaden Sancho, United fan, you really need to give your head a wobble. Our problems go far deeper than just signing a Jaden Sancho. If anything, I would argue we would probably be doing a Jaden Sancho a disservice long term by signing him at United given our current turmoil. It doesn't make any sense. Like... None of our players make sense. If you sign a Jaden Sancho, you can't have Jaden Sancho playing in front of Luke Shaw or Aaron wan -Bissaka. They're not good enough, right? You need fullbacks who are good enough on the ball and technically to bring out the best in those sort of wingers. Just imagine the horror shows that we're going to see wing play between Jaden Sancho and Aaron wan -Bissaka. Like, it's just too bad. Really, really bad. So there needs to be a complete overhaul with how we kind of play the game. And even in terms of our ball, ball playing centre backs, like none of them, maybe with the exception of maybe Lindelof, maybe Harry Maguire on a good day, you would call ball playing centre backs, right? They, they, they kind of can play on the ball because they're professional football players, but they're not going to exactly progress the play. So we're going to need a number six to come from deep, collect the ball from the centre backs and then spread it up the pitch. Who's that young centre defender midfielder going to be? Declan Rice? You think we're going to sign Jaden Sancho, Declan Rice, a defender and a midfielder? Or oh, well, De Jaden Sancho and De uh, and Declan Rice and a striker? Do you honestly think that's going to happen after we just signed um, Elisa Cavani to a new deal? It makes no sense. Jaden Sancho alone, even with this, you know, depreciated market in the COVID era, um, you know, Dortmund now know we're desperate, having been, you know, embarrassed in the Europa League final against Villarreal, seventh, league, seventh you know, place finished uh, team in the La Liga and stuff. They're going to still want to put us over a barrel in terms of the pricing for Jaden Sancho. It's not like we're going to get him for like 20 million. We're still going to pay north of 70 for him. So we, you think we're definitely going to get Jaden Sancho and Declan Rice in one window? I doubt that very much. But if we do, that's going to be our only two signings. And do you think with the addition of Jaden Sancho and Declan Rice that we can legitimately close the gap between Man City? I still think we're going to go into next season trying to finish in the top four. I don't think top four is a, is a given. I think this season was such a weird one, was such a one-off that I don't think it's ever going to be replicated, especially with the lack of fans really affected maybe some teams, especially our away record was maybe greatly influenced by the lack of fans in the stadium. But Arsenal are going to come good. I reckon after another, you know, disappointing year with Arteta in charge, for sure Tottenham are going to improve if they end up hiring Conte. That's going to take them to a whole nother level. Liverpool, of course, are going to come good again. Chelsea, of course, are going to do what Chelsea do and compete. Man City are going to do what they've always done and compete and probably win again. Can we legitimately say that we're even going to be challenging Man City? I'd say we're going to be challenging and fighting for our lives to get into a top four, especially with um, Champions League football. Right, like I would with with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's reluctance reluctance to rotate the squad or rotate the starting eleven. There's going to be a lot of tired players playing week in, week out. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be pretty. I guarantee you that. Bruce Dortmund understands to be desperate to sell in the summer to raise money. It says while a list of United offloads could be headed to a potential sale uh, of either David De Gea or Dean Henson, with both goalkeepers understood to be unhappy with the prospect of starting next season as second choice. That's an odd one with the goalkeeper one, isn't it? It doesn't really make any sense. We gave De Gea a bumper contract where he's on like five, 350 mil, or 350, 350,000 per week plus. Then we gave An uh, Dean Anderson a contract like he's a you know number one goalkeeper. Then we rotated them all season. Solskjaer wasn't sure which one actually worked. Didn't want to stick with one just you know for the long term. 
De Gea plays the Europa League final. So if you're De Gea, what do you think? Do you think you're going to be number one? Probably. There's probably not a lot of suitors for De Gea when he does leave United anyway, because, you know, he's older and he's going to cost a lot of money. He's got to take a pay cut in some extent. United don't like offloading players without getting anything back in return. Even if the player is, you know, past their sell-by date. It's still going to be an interesting season going forward. Sancho 21 was a target a year ago, but a deal could not be struck with Dortmund, who refused to lower the price point of £108 million. Pounds. The England forward is expected to leave um, the West... How do you say that? West Fallon Stadion. The, leave West Fallon Stadion this summer with a lower fee and his social tag is first choice as a wide forward. Aston Villa's Jack Grealish is a big one. Is a matter by United, but bringing Sancho back to England is social tag's preference, yeah. But I'd, I'd definitely go for a Jack. If you pick a Jack Grealish, that's definitely going to cause a bit of upset in the fan base because Jack Grealish on current form is miles better than a Marcus Rashford. Like, you know, I'd bench Rashford for a Grealish in a heartbeat. Without even blinking an eyelid, I'd bench Grealish for flipping. I'd bench Bruno for Grealish without a heartbeat, but I don't think he operates that well in the centre. I think he's probably best coming home for the wings. Um, it continues the market has been altered by Harry Kane wanting to leave, but they only be expected to fight to keep the England captain. United would like to bring in a young central midfielder in, ma- uh, in the mould of Rend uh, Edward Kamavinga, but it would be a player for the future rather than to make an immediate impact. That and other businesses will be conducted according to United's transfer by committee policy, one of which will be headed by Woodward. How is he still making decisions footballing when he's going to leave anyway? God almighty. Despite him reigning in the wake of his last European Super League debacle, Woodward would remain at the help of United's transfer plans for the longest as he position at the club's executive vice chairman with a departure plan for the end of 2021. United's group managing director Richard Arnold is widely expected to succeed Woodward, maintaining the club's policy of promoting from within, but it's not currently part of the transfer committee that includes commercial experts such as Matt's judge, director of negotiation Cliff Batty. Who the hell is that? Chief financial officer. Judges, um, <laughs> judges the United's chief negotiator on the financial side of transfers, although the Glazers via Woodward have already always maintain their hands-on approach and have always final say so on the deal the committee includes so look how many people it takes to sign the plan no wonder we're in oh my god man we're in shambles man we do everything opposite of how the top sides do but then we expect top size results we ha- want to have patience with a coach that clearly isn't good enough we want to i don't know man we have a committee of people too many of people that probably have no footballing knowledge or aren't quote unquote footballing people. Oh my god, the committee includes social Mike, uh, sister Mike Feeling. What's Mike Feeling doing there? John Murto, the newly appointed um, director of football at Old Trafford, and technical director Dan Fletcher, who offers insights into United's academy and how emergency lets inform transfer business, as well as the representative of United Scouting Department. But for as long as it remains in the post, Woodward will oversee the transfer activity, partly in order to affect a smooth handover if expected, as his friend Arnold steps into the shoes. His friend. Oh, Solskjaer had admitted that he would not dream the steam the season to be successful without the victory against Villarreal on Wednesday. And in the fallout of the marathon penalty shootout defeat, he has um, he has other squad issues to deal with. Oh God, oh my daddy van der Beek and his other stuff. So yeah, you get the deal, and you get the gist. <sighs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. What can you do? Let's move on from that one because it's bumming me out. It really is.